Let's take a look at the Eckerge and let's review our upper leg anatomy. So here I am in the screen and we can start taking a look now at the legs, uh, the upper uh, muscles of the leg, both in the front now, the side, and now also in the back view as I, as I go around. So I've got my squeaky chair. Uh, it's old, it's ancient. We love our squeaky chair. I'm not going to fix it. So in, for, for posterity, these videos will always have our beautiful squeaky chair. All right. Okay. okay, so uh, let's get started now. Uh, let's take a look at the, the uh, front leg muscles and let's uh, see them revealed now on Houdon's uh, Ecorge. So, <clears throat> again, underneath the quads is the vastus intermedius. Remember, we don't see that, but it will come from the uh, lower end of the tro great trochanter and sheath underneath all of this material and then come down to the tendon and also the ligament over the patella and down to the uh, tubercle there, that triangular tubercle of the, of the uh, <clears throat> tibia. <clears throat> and so that's underneath the quads, especially the, especially the rectus femoris. Now here, this bulging muscle right here is the rectus femoris, right in this, this area. So we have the rectus femoris here attaching, originating from under the, the, um, the spine, remember, of the pelvis, the inferior uh, level, that secondary spine, not up here, but a little bit lower underneath here, not where the sartorius is in the tensor fascia lata, but underneath here, coming down and bulging here, and it's a shorter muscle, powerful sh muscle, but a little bit shorter than the other two, and then we have the bulging head here, then the tendon, coming down, sheathing over now, the again, the patella and the uh, ligament of the patella. I'm going to pull out just a little bit, make sure we get that just a little bit further, and down on into, uh, again, the tibia. So, rectus femoris here, vastus medialis, on the medial end, here the medialis, vastus medialis, both here. They give us that beautiful kind of cupping, curving fullness of the inner lower thigh of the upper legs. Let me kind of just show you that a little bit, have our wonderful, beautiful model show off a little bit of those, of those gams, those legs. And so we can see that, right? So this intermedialis in through here, you know, again, it connects up into the greater trochanter underneath a little bit, the inferior part underneath, so the medialis. On the outside, we have the lateralis, okay, right over in through here, the lateralis muscle. Again, it attaches to underneath the greater, greater trochanter here and comes on out, bulges out here. Pretty powerful, large muscle, not to be confused with the iliotibial tract. Then we see its tendon come over and sheath over, back over the patella, underneath and down to the uh, ligament of the tubercle down here uh, attaching to the uh, tibia. Lateralis over here. The arm's in the way, but that's okay. You can kind of see it in here. Vastus lateralis. That makes up our quad. So the vastus intermedius, the rectus femoris, the vastus medialis on the medial side of the leg, and the intermedialis right in through here on the lateral side of the the leg. Let's talk about now the sartorius. So the sartorius coming from the superior part of the spine of the pelvis here and here and notice how they are like belts, like a leather belt you would wear around around your waist, right? So that's what's happening here as it attaches, attaching to that pelvic point and look how beautifully it curves downward to around the medialis to give it more fullness in through here. This gets a nice full head in through here and then attaches down under into the tibia on the medial, medial side right in through here. Really lovely, beautiful, long muscle, inner thigh muscle attaching up high and moving down low. Next to it is the tensor fascia lata in through here. Again, I call it the Starbucks muscle. It sounds like a Starbucks drink. I'll have a tensor fascia lata 
in a donut or a croissant and you'll be on your way with some cream, you know, in your tincture fasciolata. The TFL, the tincture fasciolata, helps stabilize this area of the, the pelvis on the side. This bulgy muscle in through here creates a little bit of a gap. We have some gaps in through here. It also helps right in through here, this particular area, if you take, I was taught this in Los Angeles when I was training, it's called the three finger gap, and you could put three fingers here, and it's the straight area of your leg, right in this area. You lift your leg, your rectus femoris helps lift it, and you have a space for your fingers to rest nicely. They kind of get cupped in there. So this is actually a straighter part of the leg. So if we see this in profile, right in through here, this is a little straighter leg before the rectus femoris and the sartorius bulge out a little bit there. Now, going down the lateral side, we see this iliotibial tract. Can you see it? It's a tendinous, fibrous, sheathing kind of muscle, really tense, dense, excuse me, dense fiber, sheathing over the trochanter here and up onto and around the glute in this area. And you can see how it nicely curves down onto and into this tendon, which attaches to the lateral side over the fibia a little bit right in through. You see this bump right in through there. So we have tendinous material here on the patellar head from the three muscles of the vastus muscles, really, really four, and the rectus femoris. Then we also have the tendinous head here of the iliotibial tract. And then back here, we'll talk about that muscle and what it's doing in a moment. So the iliotibial tract, uh, in very well developed people you can see this bulge out in athletic events at times. It'll get buried by muscle and fiber and fat at times by others, but you can see it bulge. Now, right in through here is the head of the greater trochanter. It doesn't get completely covered by fiber and muscle tissue, so it will be exposed a little bit and it's that bony little pocket right here on the side. So it's a little bit more hip bone um, to explore. So let me turn this a little bit so we can see that. Round through, tensor fasciolata, and then the iliotibial tract coming down. Now, let's go behind, talk about the glutes, and then we'll finish up with the adductors. So here, here we have the glutes in all their glory, right? The gluteus, gluteus maximus, large butt muscles. Notice how they're wing shaped to take on the look and feel of the pelvis. The pelvis really is kind of a butterfly kind of shape, isn't it? So it really takes on that uh, feeling. So the glutes attach to the fossa of the, uh, the uh, uh, pelvis in through here, running down below onto the sacrum, underneath the ischium and around, and attaching over, sheathing over to the femur, the linea aspera of the back of the femur, and onto there and over the trochanter, but not the, the head part. So keep that in mind. So the gluteus maximus in through here, sacrum coming in through, erector spinae coming in through here. Now over here, a little bit, the medius, gluteus medius in this area, it attaches to the sacral spine on the lateral edge and then attaches over to the top of the uh, great trochanter uh, head in through here. And again, neither of the, the maximus or the medius, and there's a minimus, but just doesn't really show up in, in our, our drawing study, will not, not, will not cover the trochanter head fully nor completely. Keep that in mind. So you're going to get this dimple bulge. See how this bulges out, the shadow right here and it bulges kind of outward and back back in. So the glutes in the back. There we go. Okay, now lastly, well, in addition to, we still have the the um, flexors in the back. We can't forget about the flexors. I almost did how terrible of me. So we have the flexors here and here and also here. So let's identify these muscles. The flexors on the lateral edge outside here on the lateral edge are the biceps, biceps femoris. And they remind one of your bicep arm muscle because of its attachment to up to the 
ischial tuberosity and down below to the the tibia on the uh, excuse me the fibia here on the outside fibia on the outside they do not attach to the fibber the the, the femur they do attach in and with a, a fascia to the the legs around the side but the uh, major tendinous attachments are not on the uh, femur so this is the biceps femoris attaching to the ischial tuberosity in the back this hubbed area right in through here right on here and through here which are they attached to these very strong muscles so that's the biceps femoris and the thing to remember is they're lateral they're on the outside edge here in here and they create this nice subdivision this canal between the the medial muscles of the remember the semimembranous is underneath the semitendinous is on top so membranous underneath tendinous on top. They're relatively in shape and orientation. Kind of, they kind of remind you of the biceps femoris is what they look very similar. They create a canal roughly down the middle. Remember the bone, the femur comes at an angle. An angle. It does not come at one straight. So that's why we get the side of the leg view of the lateralis and the uh, iliotibial tract as well. So they do not come at you straight. They also create a little gap, a leg crease in through here, and you'll see the condyle back creasing of the skin. It's kind of a curved line on the back of the, of the, of the uh, uh, condyles in through here to give you that space. Notice how these muscles create kind of outside fingers so that the gastrocnemius or the calf can be the inside fingers to go back up into the tube of the uh, uh, underneath this kind of uh, cavity and they attach up into uh, the condyles of the femur. Pretty fascinating design of the flexor. So the flexors, there's biceps femoris on the lateral side, inside medial, the semimembranous underneath with the tendinous on top. So now lastly, let's go to the adductor. So remember, in adduction, when the legs powerfully come in like a clamp, you're adding ADD, adduction. When you're going out, opening the legs up for whatever event you need, that is ab, ABD, abduction, going out. So abduction, adduction, abduction, adduction. All right, those muscles aid in that. Uh, a movement, especially adduction, bringing in the ab going out will be performed by the muscles of powerful quad muscles of, uh, of your leg. So the adductors in here, it's a little tougher to get through here, but we'll kind of just generally see them. What I want you to know about this is that group together, all of them, obviously attach mostly, again mostly, here along what I call the pubic crest area in this area, except for the iliopsoas muscle, which will attach to the lesser trochander of the femur and also attach inside this scapular, uh, excuse me, this uh, pelvic fossa in through here, also attached to the lumbar vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae as it goes up a little bit, finger over, flow down, over a little bit of the, the head and neck of the trochanter, the femur, and down to the lesser uh, trochanter. The rest of them will attach along here. And of course, we have in order, we have the iliopsoas right up and through here. We have a little gap, then we have the pectineus, we have the brevis, we have the longus, magnus in here, and then this lovely little strand that reaches and connects relatively with the sartorius is the gracilis muscle as well. So let me twist and turn so you can see all that together in light. It's good to have some more dramatic shadow on the model so you can kind of see that in a, in a dramatic uh, a way as well. So this Ecker J, as small as it is, it works really nicely to illustrate the problems 
in solutions we have for our drawing. So the solutions to all of these drawing problems is to group them, draw them in volumetric uh, forms, group them together, and then begin the slow process of starting to separate them out and memorize them. It's totally, under, totally doable if you'll take the time to investigate them group-wise individually and then remember their form. You'll forget the names because I even have to go back from time to time and say, okay, what was the name of that one? But it's the form. It's the form that's most, most important. There goes Mr. Squeaky. All right. So there you go. Those are the upper leg muscles of the human form. Good luck drawing them. Um, and I will see you guys again uh, for our next, next lesson with the Epergé. All right. You guys take care. Bye-bye.